Thank you very much. Uh, and I would like to, to thank the organizers uh, to really giving us the opportunity to present uh, Prolenia and Crudopadine for the treatment of ALS. And uh, Michael sends his regards. Unfortunately, he was unable to uh, come here and present himself. So um, I'm presenting um, uh, for, uh, for Prolenia. So I will just share my screen. Okay. So uh, at uh, Prelenia, we are developing pridopadine for the treatment of ALS and Huntington's disease. Pridopadine is an investigational drug. It's a small molecule and it is administered orally twice daily in the morning and in, in the afternoon. Uh, pridopadine is a highly selective uh, sigma-1 receptor agonist. It binds and activates a, sigma, a, a protein called sigma-1 receptor, which is highly expressed in the brain and in the spinal cord. This drug has been in clinical trials previously, mainly in patients with Huntington's disease, and has a very um, safe and tolerable profile. In prior trials in Huntington's patient, we can also, we also uh, show maintenance of total functional capacity and total functional capacity is the, uh, the way to measure disease stage and clinical functional progression. There is also some data to suggest a durable effect up to five years, um, maintaining total functional capacity in open label studies in HD patients. So what is the Sigma-1 receptor? The Sigma-1 receptor is, an, uh, is actually a chaperone. It's an intracellular protein highly expressed in the brain and in the spinal cord, and it has a very important role in a cell response to stress. It sits, within, it sits on the ER membrane in close proximity to the mitochondria in a region called the mitochondrial associated membrane, and activation of the sigma-1 receptor has many neuroprotective effects. It can uh, reduce the generation and death of neurons uh, mediated that is imposed by cellular stress. It enhances neuronal health and function by increasing energy production, mitochondrial function. It can induce clearance of toxic proteins by enhancing autophagy. And it can also enhance neuronal connectivity by enhancing dendritic spines and reduces uh, ER stress, oxidative stress, and neuroinflammation. Specifically, we show that pridopadine enters the brain, it can cross the BBB, and has a very selective and robust occupancy of the sigma-1 receptor. And what you can see here is a PET imaging study that was done in healthy volunteers as well as in HD patients. Uh, at the upper panel, what you can see is patients that were injected with a radioligand fluspidine, which is a highly selective sigma-1 receptor, and you can see it's very widely occupies many areas of the brain. When you pretreat with pridopadine, you can see a complete displacement of the fluspidine radioligand. And this, this indicates that there is over 90% occupancy of the sigma-1 receptors by pridopadine in the brain. We also did a very similar PET imaging study looking at the uh, occupancy of pridopadine for dopamine receptors, and we saw very minimal uh, approximately 3% uh, occupancy, which demonstrates the selectivity of pridopadine for the sigma. The sigma-1 receptor, as I mentioned, is highly expressed in areas that are implicated in ALS. It has high level of expression in the spinal cords and also in the cortical areas. It sits in a very strategic place within the cell. So on the ER, uh, very close in contact with the mitochondria, in the MAM mitochondrial associated membranes. And here in this place where, in it, where, it act, where it is activated, it can improve mitochondrial function, reduce oxidative stress. It rescues the calcium signaling and reduces ear stress. It also has a very important function in the nucleocytoplasmic transport. It also enhances autophagy. And we also show that uh, uh, activation of the sigma-1 receptor by pridopadine can enhance axonal transport of BDNF or mitochondrial. Um, we show it increases dendritic spines and enhances uh, rescues synaptic plasticity. 
the role of the sigma-1 receptor in ALS is very interesting. First of all, it was shown in animal models that when you knock out the sigma-1 receptor in SOD1 mice, you exacerbate the uh, disease progression in these cells. And here you can see the survival of the SOD1 that expressed the sigma-1 receptor. And this is our SOD1 mice um, where the sigma-1 receptor was knocked out. And you can see a significant reduction in the survival of this mice. Furthermore, a very interesting point is that in human, uh, rare mutations in the sigma-1 receptor cause ALS. And we also saw a very interesting dose, uh, gene dose response. So what it means that what, when you have a complete loss of function, mutations that cause complete loss of function of the sigma-1 receptor, you get a very rare um, juvenile form of ALS. And when you have other mutations, mesense, muta mesense mutations that cause partial loss of function, um, this causes uh, a late onset uh, form of ALS. Another important aspect is that um, mutations in the ALS, specifically the E102Q, which causes a juvenile form uh, of ALS, um, specifically shows impairment in autophagy. And here, what you can see here is, uh, this, was, this is a, a paper that uh, looked at um, uh, cells, uh, lymphoblastoid cells from a uh, healthy control and a patient with a mutation. And you can see impaired autophagy, you can see accumulation, uh, this abnormal accumulation of uh, autophagic material. And also on the, in the literature, autophagy deficits are observed in ALS in many forms in preclinical models and also uh, in, in the clinic in human cells, iPSCs that are uh, derived from C9-ORF mutation show impaired autophagy. C9-ORF uh, mutations are uh, the most common cause of ALS, uh, downregulate autophagy, and this is also shown in animal models. Specifically, we tested the effect of pudopidine on autophagy markers. And what you can see here is some preliminary, pre preliminary work that was done at Michael Hayden's lab at UBC. And uh, when we treated uh, cells, and this is not specifically ALS cells, but we do see an effect of pudopidine on the enhancement of two uh, central reg regulators of autophagy, Beclin-1 and the P62 flux. Um, predopidine treatment significantly enhanced uh, autophagy markers in these cells. Another study that was done in collaboration with Professor Tsung Ping Su from the NIH, uh, Tsung Ping Su used uh, the uh, NCS34 cells, he transfected them with a C4, uh, with a, this is sorry for the, with a G4C2 expansion. And in these cells that are expressed the G4C2, you can see a reduction in the LC32 expression, meaning reduction in the autophagy marker. And again, when he treated these cells with predopidine, he saw a very significant increase um, in the autophagy markers. We also used other uh, preclinical models um, of ALS to see the effect of predopidine. And this work was done with a collaboration, uh, in collaboration with Professor Ron Perlson from Tel Aviv University. And he used a microfluidic chamber to look at the effects of um, the muscle together with motor neurons. And uh, what he tested here is, actual, is the actual uh, neuromuscular junction function uh, recording muscle contractility. And when he used wild type myocytes, he sees uh, a small increase after pre uh, pre treatment in uh, contracting myofibers. In SOD1 uh, cells, you can see a significant reduction, which was rescued very significantly after treatment in pre -dopidine. And what is uh, interesting is that when he knocked out the sigma-1 receptor from these motor neurons, there was a complete loss of predopidine protective effect. And this tells us that what we see here, predopidine effect is really mediated by the sigma-1 receptor. Um, and it's important to know that uh, we see this uh, effect, selective effect of predopidine by the sigma-1 receptor in all other uh, preclinical models where we either knock out the sigma-1 receptor or inhibit it, we completely lose any protective effect. 
This is another example from uh, the work that was published by Ron Perlson. Um, here he recorded the BDNF axonal transport. Again, he sees a significant impairment in the ALS cells, which can be rescued after pre-dopidine treatment. And again, this effect was completely lost when the cells um, did not express the sigma-1 receptor. Um, so as I mentioned before, uh, pridopadine has been uh, studied extensively in HD patients. It's currently in an ongoing phase three trial in Huntington patients, and it has a very favorable uh, safety and tolerability profile. We have data from over 1,300 subjects uh, accumulating to over 1,300 patient, patients years, patient years. Most of the patients uh, were treated with a dose of 45 milligram BAD. And this is the dose that is also currently being evaluated in the ALS trial. Um, we have um, long-term safety data of over five years from open label studies. And the side effect profile of pridopadine at 45 milligram twice daily is comparable to placebo. Pridopadine based on um, this attractive features uh, was chosen to participate in the ALS uh, platform trial, which is run by uh, Mas the Healy Center in Mass General Hospital uh, with Merit Kalkovich. And what we show is that the sigma-1 receptor, which predopidine targets, is a valid target for, uh, uh, for the treatment of ALS. We see that the lack of sigma-1 receptor can accelerate progression. We see the genetic link between mutations of, in sigma-1 receptor and ALS. We also have preclinical data, compelling data to suggest a therapeutic potential um, showing in uh, SOD1 mice and in cellular models, as well as some C9 ORF uh, cellular um, data that we now have. We see a robust target engagement selective in human brains um, at the clinical relevant dose. And we also have data to uh, suggest that pridopidine is safe and tolerable. So currently pridopidine is the fourth regimen uh, within the ALS platform trial. Um, and uh, we are currently, so we, we are the fourth regimen and uh, uh, the study is currently ongoing. Um, this, th this is an update. Uh, from two weeks ago, uh, we had our first patient randomized last January. Uh, we have almost a 90% uh, of our target uh, patient randomized to the study. As expected, we see a low dropout rate, which suggests that the drug is safe and tolerable as we expected based on what we know from HD. Um, importantly, recently we were granted the orphan drug designation in the US and EU for ALS, and we are on track to complete recruitment by the end of this year. Um, we are very excited and very hopeful to, that we will be able to see uh, positive signals in ALS patients as we see in the HD trial. And by this, I, I complete my presentation and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Um, great presentation showing us uh, information all the way from basic discovery um, through to the clinical um, development right now. Um, a couple of questions um, just uh, to start things off. I guess you presented a lot of different um, uh, endpoints um, in cells and in animal models that change as, as a function of uh, sigma receptor um, activation. Um, is there, what would one expect to be the most direct downstream consequence um, of activating sigma-1 receptor? And is it even measurable? So the, because the sigma-1 receptor is actually a chaperone protein, and mm -hmm. when you activate it, it acts within the cell. So when it improves mitochondrial function and it improves ER uh, calcium signaling and it can reduce autophagy. So it actually works on many cellular processes or cellular pathways that are impaired in ALS and other neurodegenerative disorders. So it's very hard to say how you correlate one cellular 
uh, effect into a clinical outcome. But obviously what we are measuring is the overall function of the cell. And if you improve that, then you definitely expect to see an overall improvement in function. And um, one other question that I have, um, you uh, presented data demonstrating that uh, knocking out sigma-1 receptor in SOD1 mouse model accelerates disease. Um, is it, has it been characterized what happens to wild-type mice, so non-transgenics where you also knock out sigma-1 receptor? What are the consequences of that? Yes, that's a great question. So when you knock out sigma-1 receptor from wild-type mice, they do not get ALS. Um, there are, um, there are the, probably uh, compensation. Uh, we do see some, or not we, but in the literature, there is some spontaneous uh, neurodegeneration, for example, of the retinal ganglial cells, which also express high level of sigma-1 receptor. You do see impairment in motor function. Uh, in the rotor road, mm -hmm. um, and, and you see some signs of also uh, behavioral changes, but this is not a, a fatal. So mice do survive, even if they have a knockout of the sigma receptor. Thank you. And I have one question from Christopher Southern um, in the chat. Uh, does the compound show, I'm not sure how to interpret the question, but maybe you can help. Does the compound show a structure activity relationship in vitro and in vivo? Yeah, are they parallel? I'm sorry, can you uh, clarify the question? I'm not sure I understand. Parallel SARs, parallel structure activity relationships. So I'm not, so the sigma-1 receptor is very selective to, the prolepidine is very selective to the sigma-1 receptor. We don't have any uh, SAR data, uh, but we do see in different and various uh, cellular and animal models, direct effect of predopidin and selective effects of predopidin through this receptor. Well, thank you very much uh, for that great presentation. And we will move on uh, to our third presenter in this session, um, who will be Dr. Raj Mira uh, from Celos Therapeutics.